Welcome to the session on flipped classrooms. Let's take a look here a little bit at the history of the flipped classroom. So in the traditional classroom, as you can see in the image, the lecture took place, the teacher, as the people who've been really promoting flipped learning said, was the sage on the stage, the person, the bearer of all knowledge, telling the students the information. Whereas if we look at the other illustration on the right in the flipped classroom, the students come into the class, the teacher acts as a monitor, as a facilitator, as a guide, as the students are working on different tasks individually in pairs or in groups. So these are the basics of the flipped classrooms. So some of the stuff here, the, the three steps that you'd have to do is a bit of technological pre-learning, classroom assistance, as we said, guided activities, and then as it said here, an addition could be enrichment activities where they might go to a lab or do a project or do a field trip or do an activity between two classes. So planning a flipped classroom, somebody was saying, well, how do we put it into practice? First things first, have you got digital resources at home and at school? The next point, really important too, you don't have to do all of your lessons with flipped learning. You can decide which lessons best apply themselves to. So you know, if you're doing the animals unit, it might be as simple as watching a farm animal video, circling the animals that they saw when they watched the video, coming in the next day and you know discussing the animals they like best or whatever it is. Important next step as well, explain the method to the students, to the parents, to your co-workers, so that they know what's being expected of them and why you're trying this new methodology. And this next one, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just really torpe or if what it is, if I'm not you know, meant to be a movie star, but I find it very difficult to record my own videos. Make sure that you plan the activities for the next day in class, have the task and monitor the task during the activities, and then give feedback and get feedback from your students. So this is a quick sort of step-by-step. -step. So one of the big questions here is what do we do if they don't watch the videos? So one of the ways to do this sort of checking about them watching the video that I've used is this sort of entrance and exit ticket. So it's not actually a ticket, but what I do is I have students at the door of the classroom with a list of questions. And as people are coming in the classroom or if I arrive in the classroom, they walk around the classroom asking questions and they have a list of questions and answers to ask their partner. So some of the things here that we could do in the ELT class that could be done on video at home. Obviously grammar points. So especially if you're getting up to Quinto and Sexto de Primaria or if you work in ESO or in higher levels, you can use you know, writing templates. You, know, you can explain to them how to write something and then have them do the writing in the class instead of doing the writing at home. You can have them investigate different genres of writing. You can have them look at exam skills if they're getting, you know, these are for older learners, looking at exam skills. Uh, give some background reading for the topic or for the class. They could also watch a story. They could watch a music video. They could watch a biography. They could even watch ads. I mean, there's some fantastic ads out there. You know, I, I don't know, like Monte the Penguin. I mean, there are some excellent, excellent short films, really. You know, they're ads, but they're, they really are short films that the students could watch and maybe talk about how the characters feel or what scenes they like. So, any other things you could add to that list? I like this point here about culture. I think that's a very good one. Like, you know, if you're doing Christmas or you're doing Halloween, they could watch a cultural video or a festival's video at home. You've got vocabulary, grammar, reading stories. Good, the colors, the numbers, fantastic. And then here, keep in mind, we often talk about the importance of that. And when we talk about watching videos or using videos for homework, I got this from my friend Robert Quinn, I think we need to think of the VAT, but the value added to teaching. So please don't just be putting on videos for the sake of putting on videos. Don't be sending them home to watch horrid videos that are too long, are not well recorded, just for the sake of doing a flipped lesson. And just to close off, just to sort of end the seminar here, when the world inside schools looks so different to the world outside schools, what are we preparing students for? So I think this is another interesting point with the flipped classroom. That, you know, the sooner they're developing their digital skills, looking at the sources, deciding on what they like and don't like in the digital world, 
the better prepared they will be for the future as well. Fantastic. So I hope you got a bit of an idea of how it works, some of the pros, some of the contras, and it was lovely to work with all of you. Lots more webinars coming, so keep your eyes peeled. And thank you for joining us. Great to see you, Elena and Alex and some other friends from around Spain. Bye-bye. Thanks to everyone.